Aubrey, uh, our veteran correspondent, into this conversation. Jay, uh, you go back to the, the Mercury uh, days when to, uh, to look at what we used then and the propulsion we used to get that tiny capsule off the ground after the astronauts won the debate, after all, to put a window and a hatch in it, uh, it is hard to believe that we're talking about this much thrust and this large a spacecraft, however now outdated this may seem by today's standards. Yes, it is. It is getting outdated, Brian. And as you say, we go back. Uh, it started with NBC in July 1958. That'll be 45 years this July. And started covering here. Uh, and the early missile launches and into uh, when NASA was formed in August of 1958 uh, and into the Mercury program and the seven original astronauts. And uh, astronaut Alan Shepard was the first to go up on May 5th, uh, 1961, for 115 miles in space. And he was only up there 16 minutes. But in, in, it was a suborbital flight. It was only... Uh, 4,000 miles per hour, but it was a real gutsy thing uh, for him to do, and everybody around here hit their knees in the churches and everywhere else when he flew, and the uh, traffic stopped on the roadways and all. The place was just frozen in time when that uh, little Mercury capsule went up there, and now here we're flying this enormous shuttles out of here rather routinely. As you said, this was uh, flight number 113 off shuttles we've had 144 manned flights we had 31 before the first shuttle flew uh, on april the 12th 1981 which was columbia and as you also reported this was the 28th flight of columbia so it's a huge difference over uh well let's see the first flight was 60 this is 2003 so come this may It'll be 43 years. Jay, it is hard to believe uh, that we have been at this uh, for this long. Uh, of course, the technology, as you pointed out earlier, the uh, constant retrofitting and updating uh, continues. And I, I think it's safe to say that... ...of one another instead of trying to kill everybody and always want to go to war. And... All right, we'll move on. Next call comes from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Wait, do you um, want to make um, a comment about Columbia? About the space shuttle, sir? Precisely. I'd like to say we're all very sorry here, even though we're so far away from the center of the event, so to speak. But whenever a tragedy like that hits, we feel that we, as part of this single world, are also hurt. I can pretty much imagine how hard that is for the American people, but also for the Indian people, the Israeli people, as it was an international mission. Have there been Brazilian astronauts, you know? The spectacular camera angles, uh, uh, tiny cameras uh, mounted on the uh, launch hardware, uh, aircraft to aircraft cameras, uh, unbelievable angles of the uh, space flight that were unimaginable just a few years ago. Just to advance what we're going to hear, Sean O'Keefe is the administrator of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the agency which has today, apparently with the rest of us, suffered a, uh, a huge loss. Uh, seven uh, shuttle astronauts on board, including the first ever Israeli uh, flying today when this happened over central Texas. Um, a catastrophe in the sky. Uh, a lot of uh, people uh, were forced outdoors by the sound. Uh, they watched this site play out. At first, one sizable chunk of wreckage, and then it fell apart into what we now know are some very, very tiny pieces strewn across a huge part of the Texas landscape. People being warned to stay away if and when they see it. Uh, people being warned that it not only is evidence but may be very, very hazardous to their health because of chemicals that adhere to it. Uh, it may emit uh, a component of the fuel used on board the Challenger, uh, which can uh, be harmful uh, just on initial contact. Um, we should uh, show you what NASA is showing us. STS-107 was the name of this mission, and there you have it. That's what we're getting from them. This graphic will come down and be replaced by a live uh, image of what we presume to be a podium. Uh, Administrator O'Keefe will come out and read a statement. We have yet to have a declaration of death, of course, uh, by NASA 
uh, uh, for these uh, seven souls on board the uh, spacecraft today. Uh, it's a distinction uh, that'll certainly be important to the families, but uh, all of our experts, uh, uh, Jay Barbary among them, uh, several uh, veteran astronauts are uh, confirming that uh, it is uh, uh, just beyond mathematically impossible for anyone to survive uh, such a catastrophic breakup at such a speed. We're talking about something that happened 39 miles above the Earth. Um, space begins at roughly 60 miles, so basically double that. This uh, spacecraft was going 12,000 miles an hour. As you look at the members of this crew, all of them uh, uh, astounding uh, resumes, uh, biographical information, so many of them veterans of more than one shuttle flight. Uh, and uh, the point we made earlier in our coverage, it is just part of the makeup, the DNA of uh, astronauts, those who uh, uh, push the edge of the envelope, uh, the phrase made popular by author Tom Wolfe that there will be another crew in line for the next mission who won't uh, think twice about the safety of going up. It is what they do. It's what they do for a living. They are a brave, patriotic, and almost universally very smart bunch. Uh, Jay Barbary, we were making the point earlier on that they are, when you walk into a room, uh, they are identifiable. You can pick out the astronaut. There is, uh, there is something about them, and they are... Uh, constant dinner speakers and event speakers around this country for good reason. They have astounding stories to tell, and they're uh, almost intoxicating to be around. That is true, Brian. They are a cut above most people, as you said, and they really stand out. It's hard not to notice an astronaut when they walk in the room. You don't have to be told, as you said, that they are an astronaut. You know when those people walk in the roo uh, room, there is something outstanding about this, this person. There's something extraordinary about this person, and that goes for every one of them that goes up there. And you know the commander now on the next mission is to be Eileen Collins. She was the first woman to command a mission, and she is to command the mission to the International Space Station. It was scheduled to take off on March the 1st to head to the space station, but I think that we can... Uh, uh, we can say that that won't take place at this time. How long it'll be, we don't know. How long the uh, shuttles will be grounded, we don't know. Uh, until they get a firm handle on what happened today and they have fixed it. Until the fateful uh, seconds this morning uh, over Dallas. So we just want to make it very sure. clear that while you may hear some speculation along the way, in fact, Nobody knows what happened to it, and nobody may know for a long time, if ever. I would add a third level of speculation. Because there was an Israeli citizen on board this flight, there are going to be some people you may hear as you turn around that, that, that perhaps terrorism was involved in this. Security for this shuttle flight was beefed up because of the presence of the colonel from Israel. However, the Homeland Security Department says there is, is, is basically discounting that, that there is no way where this vessel was at the time it broke up that anyone, a bomb, could have hit it. Dick John Roberts pointed out, short of an interballistic missile, it's unlikely that terrorism is involved.